Hi everyone, welcome back to the kitchen. Today I have an awesome sandwich for you that is perfect for lunch or dinner or sharing or anytime you wanna eat it. Today we're gonna to share with you a traditional and a Tampa style Cuban sandwich made at home in your sandwich press, on your griddle, in your frying pan, or wherever you choose to make it. I can't wait to show you how this all comes together. Today we are going to build a really delicious sandwich that is very popular in Florida. This is called a Cuban sandwich. Many of you may be familiar with it, whether you've ever been to or live in Florida, um, but it's inspired by Cuban flavors and it's kind of, it's kind of a creation of a lot of different ethnicities. Now, a while ago, a little over a year ago, we did a Cuban burger inspired by this particular sandwich. So a Cuban sandwich, my way, uh, it may not be completely authentic because number one, I cannot get Cuban bread in my area. So we're gonna start off by using some bolillo buns, which are readily available in most grocery stores. What you want is a nice uh, bun that's soft inside and that it will become crispy on the outside because we're gonna put this in a sandwich press. And I'm gonna be using my cast iron sandwich press for this. And you're gonna make a little bit of a sauce. Now there's some point of contention in among certain people. Do you use mayonnaise? Do you not use mayonnaise? Traditionally, a real Cuban sandwich, like from Tampa, Florida, would only have yellow mustard. Plain old fashioned yellow mustard. But we're gonna make kind of like a Dijonese kind of thing. We're using plain yellow mustard and mayonnaise and we're gonna mix those together. What sets a Cuban apart is the meats. There are two different ways you can make this. Traditionally, it's going to have smoked ham, roast or pulled pork. Today we're using roast pork because this is a leftover makeover and I made a roast pork last week and we're gonna use that up. So I sliced it super thin and we're gonna put that on our sandwich. It also has Swiss cheese. Today we're using Havarti. And if you're making a Tampa style Cuban, it's gonna have Genoa salami and it always has dill pickles. So I have some sandwich sliced pickles here. We're gonna be grilling this, like I said, on my cast iron grill pan and you're gonna need a little bit of butter. So first thing first, you wanna stir your sauce together and you want it a little heavy on the mustard because you really want that tang in there but I like the mayonnaise part because it makes it nice and creamy and it makes your sandwich really come together. So the sauce is done. We have to split our buns and um, simple as that. This is just a nice soft on the inside roll and this is gonna grill up nice and crispy on the outside. And we're gonna use a little bit of butter and today I'm using this. If you guys, I got this at my local Walmart. This is a Vermont creamy, creamery cultured butter. Um, this video is not sponsored, but I honestly, I found this a couple of weeks ago. This is the kind of butter you use for spreading on your bread or whatever, and it is delicious. I picked it up and I said, oh, this butter must like the opera because mm. it's cultured. But really what cultured butter means is it's a little bit sour. So it's like cultured like buttermilk. This butter is outstanding. And if you guys find it in your area, I highly recommend you give it a try. I wanna take a moment to say thank you for watching and being a part of our community. And please consider hitting that thumbs up button if you like what you see. And if you're new to my kitchen, welcome. Please hit that subscribe button. And as always, if you're a tried and true member of the Noreen's Kitchen family, Family, be sure and hit the bell notification button because we don't want you to miss out on all the real food for real people, real easy recipes that we present all the time right here on our YouTube channel and straight from our kitchen. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start building our sandwich before we bring the pan over and start to grill it. You want to make sure that you cover both sides of your bread with this delicious sauce. And this you don't wanna skip. If you guys are not fans of the mayonnaise, leave it out. But it does lend a really beautiful creaminess to the sandwich. You wanna start off with some smoked ham, and then you're gonna go ahead and shingle on your pork roast. Now I sliced this up super thin, and we're gonna put a couple of pickle slices. Then we're going to put the Havarti cheese. Now, oh, I already messed up. You wanna put cheese on both sides, and there's a reason. Because when you grill this, that cheese is gonna act like your glue. Yep. And then it's gonna really get everything nice and firm in there. And your sandwich is not gonna fall apart when you're eating it. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and build another sandwich and then we'll come back and we'll grill them. I almost forgot you guys. I told you if you wanna make a Tampa style to add some Genoa salami. So this one is just regular Cuban. This one on top of the pork roast, we're going to shingle some Genoa salami. Now, when I go to the deli and get my salami sliced, I like it sliced whisper thin, like that thin. I do not like a big honking slice of salami. I just, there really does, it does make a difference how you get it sliced. Pickles, cheese, and then your lid. All right, we're gonna go get the pan and we'll be right back. All right, I've heated up my pan and now we're gonna go ahead and put our sandwiches in there. Now, keep in mind, I went ahead and I put a little bit of butter on the top of the sandwiches. I also heated the press up as I heated the pan up. So we're gonna do, go ahead and we're going to let these cook and we're probably gonna flip them at least one time. You just wanna monitor them so that you don't burn them. So I have mine on medium high heat and once you see that cheese get all nice and melty and the bread nice and toasty, then you'll know that your sandwich is ready. So I'll bring it back before I flip them. Okay, I went ahead and I flipped our sandwiches. They're nice and crunchy on the bottom. And yes, they got a little brown, but they're not burnt and I'm okay with that. If you do yours, then don't let them go quite as long or put on just a little bit of a lower temperature. We're gonna let these finish up on the top side and then we'll come back and we'll cut them in half and we'll show you what they look like. All right, we have pulled our Cuban sandwiches off of the griddle and they're ready to cut in half. Now, just so you know, nice and crunchy. So I'm just gonna move this off to the side and then I'm gonna transfer one over here. I'll cut open the tampa. We're gonna go ahead and cut this in half. Oh, you hear that crispiness? Mm, that smells and sounds good already. Look at that. Beautiful. This one in half. This is the traditional one. They're gorgeous. There you have it. Our Cuban sandwiches are all done, ready to go. They're ready for us to enjoy for lunch. And really, what else do you need? You need maybe some chips. I know a lot of people enjoy eating plantain chips or yuca chips with this. Um, so it's entirely up to you. Now, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a story on the origins of this sandwich. It really did come out of a place of necessity way back in the 20s and 30s where there was a giant influx of Cubans coming to the United States. Of course, they were coming in through Florida and they settled mainly in Miami and the Tampa area where there were a number of cigar factories. There is currently only one operating cigar factory in Tampa, Florida now, and they still make cigars in the traditional manner. But this sandwich was created as something people could carry with them to eat on their break. And it was, it was made using traditional things. Now, there's a very high influence of Cuban culture in that area of the country, but believe it or not, there is also a very, at one time, there was a very high influence of Spanish, German, and Swiss. And all of those cultures can be seen in this sandwich. And that is one of the reasons that I love the Cuban sandwich so much, not just because it's delicious, but because it really has an amazing origin and heritage and story. Everything in the sandwich is representative of one of those groups of people, one of those cultures. So when you eat this sandwich, remember what you're eating. And I also forgot, the Italians are included in here too. So you have the, um, the smoked ham, which is representative of the Spanish people. You have the pork which is representative of the Cubans, along with the Cuban bread, which is from the Cubans as well. And then you have the salami, which represents the Italians, the mustard and the pickles that represent the Germans, and the cheese that represents the Swiss. So it's really not just a melting sandwich, it's a melting pot of a sandwich, and it represents a number of cultures. So when you eat this, remember that, because I love learning where, where our food comes from. I love learning where our, our traditions come from. And this is one of those traditions. I have never been to Florida. I've never been anywhere near it, but the Cuban sandwich is something I learned about and I fell in love with it automatically. Do you want to taste it? I have to. You have to. We'll give you this corner. 
Mm, did you hear that crunch? Oh my goodness. Mm. That is outstanding. Right? It's salty and tangy and creamy and crunchy and just perfect. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the perfect combination of a sandwich. So I hope that you give this a try. And I hope that when you do, you remember where it came from, how it got here, and that it really is very special in and of itself. Because I know some of you are gonna ask, here are some of the Rada products that I used in today's video. It's the six inch slicing knife, this is six inch bread knife, the carving knife, the party spreader, and the, um, the turner. So it's like a spatula. So I'll leave links down below to where you can get that at Rada's website. And if you're interested, go ahead and check it out. Best knives on the planet that I've ever used in my life. Only kind I ever have in and my affordable. kitchen. And super affordable. If you think you can't afford good knives, you're absolutely wrong. Go ahead and check it out. So I hope you give a Cuban sandwich a try sometime soon, whether it's the traditional or the Tampa style with the Genoa salami. And I hope that you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya.